Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 for the life of the flesh is in the blood and so that is why when a man's blood drains the man dies if blood is not dried up there is life in it blood is the most valuable currency in the world blood is the most costly item in the world blood is the most important thing that this world has the bible says for the life of the flesh is in the blood so another way to put it is that life is in the blood blood carries life blood is the life carrier and these mysteries cover a range but today we are going to stay on the blood first corinthians 15 verse 53 the bible said flesh and blood did not receive reveal this to you we are not just flesh or huh? blood it speaks about man being flesh and bone versus flesh and blood it tells us in our battle we are not wrestling with flesh and blood our struggle is not against flesh and blood and so for us to know how sacred blood is before we begin to separate flesh and blood and the dynamics of the mysteries in Genesis chapter 9 verse 4 but you must not eat meat with its blood still in it that was when the law of the blood was ignited you must not what eat meat with its blood in it and to tell you that it's still relevant that blood is sacred blood is not to be touched toyed or tampered with in the book of acts chapter 15 verse 20 blood is sacred human life is sacred and there is life in blood acts chapter 15 verse 20 said but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols from sexual immorality from things strangled and from the blood the reason why the most costly commodity in the world is the blood of Jesus. Now Matthew chapter 20 from verse 28 then the Bible said even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto King James Version as the son of man came not to be ministered unto why? You know the one that ministers is he not the one that gives but he came okay to minister and to give his life as ransom and if we have to be like him, we also, we ought to give, we ought to minister to others. We ought to give to the point that he gave his own life. And that's why the saints said, have we even given us and the gospel to the point of our life? People, this same Christianity people want to use to build house, ride car, was the same Christianity people were turned upside down and they died with their head down. Now, people don't want to die for people. They don't want to sacrifice for the gospel. They are not ready to defend it. They just want to open up their pocket and use it to enrich themselves. That is not the gospel. Here, the gospel that was given to us is a gospel that was received by giving. And naturally, if you are giving, it will come back. So we are to focus in blessing people, making people rich. The apostle said, and many we became poor so that you can become rich. So you can see that what we are doing is very far from the truth of the gospel. Because if by the gospel, and we begin to live out the gospel, Jesus himself, that's why he said he came to give life, John 10.10. 10. He came to do what? Give life and to give it what? In abundance. While the devil has come to kill, he has come to steal, he has come to do what? Destroy. Now you see the paradox here. Jesus came to give his life. But the devil came to do what? To steal. Look at the story in the garden. 
Can you not see the clarity of the agenda of the devil? Man was giving life in abundance in the garden. What happened? The devil shows up in the garden and aimed and targeted and must steal this relationship. If I cannot steal it, I will kill it. And however, it must be destroyed. And he cunningly and serpent met with man and began to lie. What was his plan? To kill man. Did he succeed? Yes. He killed man. Did he succeed? He stole our relationship. He stole our covenant. He stole our fellowship. He took us out of that garden. And that is why that is his plan. Every time you listen to the voice of the devil and you walk in rebellion, you are moving on the path that is designed to kill you. It's a path that is designed to steal from you. It's a path that is designed to destroy your faith in the Lord. Pray this morning, ask God, Father, deliver me. That I will no longer hear the voice of the enemy. I will not become a victim. My spirit shall not be stolen. My destiny shall not be taken. Oh Lord, open up my eyes today. That I will see the depths of what you are saying. That I will now learn from the secret place, the deep things that you are causing us to know. So that I will know that rebellion is not just I'm disobeying my mother. Rebellion is not just that I'm fighting my husband. Rebellion is not that I'm disobeying the word of God. Rebellion is not that I'm walking against my body. Rebellion is that I'm walking on the path that has been set. And that path is to kill. That path is to steal. That path is to destroy me. Father, deliver me. Oh God, save me from that part of rebellion. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. But rather, Lord, I want to return to that part of life. That part where life is. And that part where life is abundance. Every time you travel by the part of light. By the part of truth. You have come into the part of abundance. And it's only through that part can you be saved. It's only by that part can you have your release and relief. That is the only part that you can truly find your true riches. Oh, I'm just excited in my spirit to live out my life in this part of rebellion. And dear, today we are looking at the origin of law. The origin of what law? The origin of law came from Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. I'm going to show you the origin of law and I will trace it for you. If only I can do that successfully and we know what the law is, it will help us greatly in the lesson and teaching ahead of us to be able to start maturing. Can I say today's teaching is a foundational teaching to your Christian faith and work if you are interested in Christian maturity and work. Genesis chapter 2 verse 14 he said but of the three of the knowledge of good and life thou shall not eat it now the law says the day that you eat it you shall what die is that the law the law says the day that you eat it you shall do what you shall die that is law number one law number one the day you eat this you shall do what die when I began, I also showed us another law. Genesis chapter 9 verse 4. That law came when man, at the end of the Noah's ark, when man fell into sin again, and God was to restore man, and there was no food. Because initially man was not to eat meat. But because at that time, flood has covered everywhere, and there was limits of herbs. And so God allowed man to eat meat. But then he added, but you shall not eat flesh with his life. That is his blood. Now can you see where the law of blood came? This was how the origin of the law of don't eat blood came. Can you see that? Now there is always an origin of a law. And that origin of the law later on we begin to see the multiplication of that law. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Follow me. I will just try to lay foundations of understanding the law. And why we shall not. And law does not carry us anymore. And the Bible said. For the life of a, a flesh is what? In the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar. To make atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that makes atonement for their soul. Did you see that? The blood makes what? Atonement for your soul. You saw after the 
ark that it was the animals that were killed that were used to release the sacrifice of covenant like and it was the animal that released the covenant that brought atonement the sweet smelling aroma went up in the book of genesis chapter 9 and when man released that aroma god heard it from the sacrifice and said from now on i break the curse over the earth follow me please blood moves god because there's life in it it's it's sacred to god so you now see that the blood and the flesh all began to build up as law from god trying to teach man the key of redemption so we see in leviticus chapter 17 verse 12 then we see this law being strengthened again then he said therefore i say to the children of israel no one among you shall eat blood nor shall any stranger who dwells among you eat blood is that not a law that's what a law emphasis on not eating blood leviticus chapter 17 verse 14 and the bible again reinforced it so you know indeed that this is a serious matter he said for it is in the life of all flesh his blood sustains his life say my blood sustains my life my blood sustains my life and that's why in the spirit world blood is the most costly material ingredients and item because if they collect your blood they kill you because life is carried in blood and blood sustains what life and that's why people your blood is costly your blood is what costly therefore i say to the children of israel you shall not eat the blood of any flesh for the life of all flesh is in his blood whoever eats it shall be what cut off so can you see it looked as though blood now was more like a symbol of that um let's say you know the the apple did you see that apple that was in the garden that man was told not to do what eat the blood now was looking like the uh, the apple again okay so after the post noah you know after the noah's ark okay then the blood now became to be more focal it, be it became more what focal attention was now on the blood we are not talking about what the apple why because man now needed blood why man now needed what blood why was man going to need blood man was going to need blood because man has come to a level that he needed atonement man has already broken the first law that first law that says man you should not eat apple if you eat this apple you shall die man has eaten this apple and man has already died man has already what eating the apple and man has what died so the essence of now is not don't eat apple the essence now is man is dead how do we redeem man man is what dead so everything now about man is redeeming man and that was why from the time of genesis the story of who abraham isaac and jacob they were all stories of sacrifice 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 until he got to solomon solomon had to sacrifice one thousand animal what was he looking for blood blood drives heaven crazy blood causes disturbance in the spirit world the excess or the extreme of the shedding of the blood forces the spirit world to act because the spirit world has only one thing to do with man and that is the cause of redemption and so before christ was revealed the one that were coming into his story what must happen was that they were looking for what volume of blood can settle this case and the bible made us to understand in search of that blood a man like solomon when he saw god after he killed 1000 animals solomon said no problem i have known the secret solomon again started to kill 144,000 animals 100 and what 44,000 animals solomon was attempting to bring jesus down before time he wanted blood that will settle his case 
Why? Because this was a man who has gotten everything, wisdom, but you saw at the end of the day, he said, vanity upon vanity, all was what? Vanity. Nothing could be satisfied. What can take away my sin? Nothing, Nothing. but the blood of Jesus. There was sin in the body of Solomon. What Who was his mother? Sin in the lions of his father, Behold David. He knew that he needed her. And he knew that blood can bring God in. The blood of Jesus. And so he kept killing. He said, God, I will not stop. Come down. How precious is the flow that makes me, that makes me white as the blood of Jesus. No other fault. Now when you plead the blood, you are releasing power. Fountain I know, nothing, nothing but the blood. And so the Bible recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, the Bible said, Who is worthy? Verse 2. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? The Bible said there was lamentation in heaven. And they were searching. Who is the one that can break the seal? For man has committed an atrocity. And the Bible said, verse 3, something has happened. After that sin, there was a problem. The Bible said, and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Hear me. When it comes to sin, there is nobody and nothing that can be able to break it. And so when you begin to look at some men, some religion, some tradition, all kinds of things, and they tell you that you can end this problem. Nothing can. Nobody could. And the Bible continued. And from verse 9, nothing was able. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take to scroll and to open the sea, for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God. By your blood. And out of every tribe and tongue. And people and nation. Nothing was able. Nothing was able. Nothing could. Nothing could. And I tell you sincerely. The essence of understanding. Of this is this. Solomon tried. They tried. Many covenants. The kings came. After the justice failed. God tried covenants and relationship with men. But none was worthy to break the seal. And I tell you up until date and forever. And that's why it's a big sin when people try to equate anything to Jesus. Or the power of the blood. When it comes to anything that is told or yet to be untold. And I, I need you to understand the depth of this. And for us to be able to understand the depths. There were things that he did for us. And as we understand the Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9, then we know that the new song that was sung was unto him. He was able to restore man unto God. And these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. All nations, tribes, people and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hand. It was by him that nations and multitudes returned back to God. It was through the lamp. It was through his blood. Can I explain something here? Can I tell you something about the weight of the law? Having shown you how far the law was going to take us. And in it, the Bible brought it closer to us. That we may have an understanding in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 28. Then Paul said, all have sinned. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Now we will sit entirely on this new covenant revelation. 
It's the new covenant, Romans said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can you now see why all have sinned? Because the first law of don't eat, it was broken by who? Adam and Eve. And as soon as they ate that apple, man naturally became an enemy to glory. Man sinned. Every man sinned. Say every man sinned. Every man sinned. And Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us, if we have sinned, the wages of sin is what? And the gift of God is eternal life. Now you understand the scripture. You understand it very well from the first rule of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Because man was told, the day you eat this apple, you will do what? Die. So the wages of disobedience was what? That man will die. So for man to have eaten that apple, that day the judgment came. And the wages of eating that apple was what? Death. Now, do you understand it? Do you understand it? Man ate that apple. That day man fell. That day man died. And that day the wage of that penalty was death and it came upon man. And as soon as that wage of penalty of sin came upon man, man instantly died. Man instantly what? Died. The day the eyes of man was opened, that day man died. Can I put it in another way? The day man disobeyed God, he lost fellowship. God withdrew himself. Let me explain that for you. Do you know that the breath of man was what God put into the earth. And that breath was life. The life of man was the breath of God. Do you understand that? That breath of God is the life of man. And that life that is breath was what brought blood into sand. Otherwise, man was basically what? Earth. And if man was basically earth, Okay? Blood is the essence of what carried that breath. It was blood that is the carrier of bread. What carries breath is what? Blood. Psalm 104 verse 29 said, You hide their face, they are troubled. You take away your breath, they die and return to their dust. Oh my God, is somebody following me? Did you now know why a man died when the breath was taken? You take away their breath and they return to what? Very good. Verse 13. You send forth your spirits, they are what? And you renew the face of the earth. So now you know why life is in what? Blood. Life is in what? Blood. Blood carries life. Somebody declare it. Life is in the blood. And bread carries life. Amen. Now the work itself started from the book of Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The Lord God formed man of what? The dust of the ground. Say breath. Breathed into his what? Nostrils. The breath of what? Life. And man became a living being. Did you get that? So man basically is what? Dust. Man is what? Dust. So it was breath that entered man and that breath is blood. Say blood. The carrier of breath is blood. Is somebody coming up there? 
And that's why when the occult want to create something, they will take the earth, put blood inside it. They have started re releasing spirits to earth. Have you followed me? Because it is when you invoke spirit into the blood, it carries it. When they get an animal, cut their neck, and then bury it, they have taken life representing somebody they named the animal. If you are following me, wave your hand. Let me see you now. So you are either adding blood or you are taking blood. So they understand the adding of blood to the earth or taking the blood out of the earth is the process of creation that gives life or takes life. If you understand that, do your hand like this. Therefore then, do you people now understand why blood is sacred before God? Because blood is the carrier of life. Say amen. Blood is the carrier of life. So whatever is sucking your blood is drinking your life. It's taking your life. It's killing you. Blood represents life. It carries oxygen that sustains life. It carries food. It carries nutrients. Blood carries whatever that is required to do what? To sustain the life of a man. So more, can I say that blood is the container? Can I say the carrier? Say carrier. Say container. But the life is inside it. As you look at this now, this is what? The container. Say this is the container. And it's carrying what? Water. But is it the water? It is. It's not. The, it's the water It's inside it. But what is carrying the water is this what? Container. So what it means is that the breath of God is the life. Say amen. The breath of God is like the water. While the container is like the blood. If you understand, wave your hand again. Very good, thank you. So that tells me now that like this container. This container represents the carrier. Say it represents what? The carrier. So this is like what? The container. But the actual life is the breath. Say breath. That is God. Say God. And that's why when a man dies, it's only God who took that breath that can return the breath. Can I hear a man? No man has been able to successfully produce breath. That's why no human being can create anything. Forget these scientific people. Until they can create a cell, then they can start life. Nobody on the face of the earth knows where life is, has ever created it. They can take out of a cell and begin to multiply it and do whatever they think they are doing. Saying that a human being is a pan animal is a total ignorance and, I mean, a stupidity of his own nature. Who doesn't want to trust and believe God or think it? If you say there's no God, then go and produce life. Life is sacred. Life is God. Hey. Life is... God. Life is his bread. Are you following me? Life is his essence. So man wake then though. But God is not with him. I will come to that tomorrow. Then I will explain that well. So that's why you look at so many people who are living big, being big boys, enjoying themselves. They are dead though. They are what? Dead. Tomorrow you understand it. Look at this container. This container is like what? The carrier of this water. And I say to you today, understand me please, that as I carry this container now, imagine that it is blood carrying life. It is blood carrying what? So as I'm pouring it, what am I doing? I am pouring out life. If I keep pouring it, what am I doing? If you imagine a goat, somebody is removing blood from that goat. You are taking away what, what is carrying the life. When it, it finishes, whether it's goat or chicken, or motua, motua, just obala folia na aruko neme, it will just shake and shake and it will do what? Die. This one becomes what? A container. You will see the blood there, it will dry out. When it has dried out, there's no more life in it because the spirit has left it. And that's why you need to keep getting fresh ones. Say fresh one. It will dry out. You go and get fresh one. It will dry out. You can't keep getting fresh one. Because it will expire. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. The Bible says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats 
could take away sin. Underline that scripture. For it is not what? Possible. That the blood of what? Bulls and goats could take away sin. So if in your family or in the village, you still have people every time. Hana Ebuakuko. Hana Achuaja. Hana Hana Atunka and Anke Dibia. Now what Dibia see Hanka? They are only delaying their evil day. Their power is limited. Please let us stop fearing people who are just managing because he had a mebu amansin. They know it. It will expire. So that's why every person that comes will be told to go and bring something. Ada amake jebenwa dibia. Iga chita akwa. Chita na akwe chita akuko. Iga chita na ta something. Moi weti ane ego makaga abalu gafa. Age wona ti heje go heje mo abala. The blood is the carrier of spirit. And the devil knows that principle. So the devil himself uses blood to transmit demonic powers. Are you following me? Everything God is doing, the devil is also using the same principle. It's a principle. Blood will always transmit spirit. So the demonic spirits also need blood to be transmitted. And that's why a human being is the most costly, valuable creation or creature or, or um, I don't know the right word to use to tell you how important we are because you see we are in the image of God so if you can get human blood you are getting something that is closest to the best blood are you following it when the problem has not been solved with animal blood bad blood then they start looking for even a virgin blood that they will look for a blood that is close to the blood of God to silence the powers and the battles into instant release in Jesus name